Hey everybody, we're going to do one thing tonight, and that's look at the EQ, the channel EQ plugin, which is in the default set in Logic. This has gone through some revisions over the years, but I'm pretty happy with how it's working right now. We are going to look at just a few different pieces of this, um, leaving perhaps some parts of the more technical side to be discovered later. But there are a couple of really cool things we can do with the equalizer that I find myself doing all the time, so I want to just talk about them briefly. Uh, one of them has to do with the analyzer, which I use all the time. Let's push play on this little synth loop. So you can see the spectrum of the sound. If we go into some advanced tools here, let's move this up so you can see it. There we go. You can see we can change the resolution but I'm typically going to do the highest resolution if I'm using this here. Gives us a nice sense of the of the actual spectrum and we also let's go to a really slow decay so even after we stop it you can still get a good sense for where it was when you stopped so that's the decay uh, time how many decibels per second it's going to decay so for all different kinds of purposes, we would do do either settings with fast or slow. We also have the RMS, or root mean square, which is an average instead of a peak. Which will generally uh, have lower signals, but maybe more accurate for how you would actually hear it. So this is something I typically am using um, in certain circumstances. One, I'm using it when I'm mixing with headphones to make sure we don't have a ton of low frequencies here. Headphones aren't going to actually play that very much and they don't go down that low typically um, very accurately. So I'll use it to see what's going on if I'm doing some headphones. Another thing that I'll do is uh, just use this to verify when I'm in a new room or in a room with speakers I don't know that well. So I'll have that up as well. Uh, so that's one piece of that. Another thing is, is if I'm trying to figure out where some annoying frequencies are, but I can't figure it out, and so maybe I have some exhaustion in my ears, I've been mixing too long or listening too long, so I'll use this just to double check it. Okay, that's one thing I want to talk about. We can also do pre and post, which means it'll show it to you uh, with the changes you're making in post, or it'll show it to you before the changes you're making in pre. Cool. So, as you can see with most of the bands, especially the full parameter bands in the middle, we have our center frequency, we have the gain, and the Q, or the bandwidth. So, how narrow or wide. We got great ways to be able to adjust these. Just the gain, just the Q, or both. We can also click outside of the lines and move it around. So we can do quite a bit. I actually prefer to do this with the iPad app so you have more of a tactile experience, but this is pretty cool as well. Now with this, comes the Q couple right here. Q couple. So when I change the gain, look at the lines that form the bandwidth. Narrow gets wider and then more narrow. So this actually tries to preserve more of the sound as you're going through the different gain amounts. If we turn off Q couple, it keeps it, and this ends up potentially causing some problems. Look at how wide it becomes out here. That's part of the issue. Well, let's turn on Q couple. Let's go super narrow here. So it doesn't really matter anymore.
but it will adjust for those extremes to make them a little less blatant. Now, down here in our uh, additional settings, we have different Q couple strength options. Strong being one of them. This is going to really do more and preserve that more. But one of my favorites, if you're going to do this, is asymmetrical medium. So as I go down, look how narrow it gets. But when I go up, it doesn't get as narrow. It means it's doing more when you're cutting, so it preserves more of the sound there, but worries, or doesn't do as much when you go into the boosts. So uh, another way to work with that. Um, two other things I want to talk about. One is actually changing our view here. You can see we're expanding out the low frequencies by clicking and dragging on this, uh, which is kind of a, a good way to change our view. If I'm doing more with higher frequency or higher gain levels, then I'll expand that to the top part. If I'm doing more with low frequencies, I'll expand out the low frequencies. You can also see here that we can change the range for the analyzer. So if something's really soft, we can just adjust what we're seeing on the left side. Last but not least, we can actually come through our channel EQ and switch the linear phase and it will maintain everything. It's a little different color and this uses much different math underneath the hood. It doesn't use phase relationships to change the frequency and so it actually adds more latency and adds more processing requirements but in many cases for mastering or for other really uh, for sounds that you want to preserve the initial sound without having the EQ color as much, then this is the tool you want to use for that. Okay, this has just been a brief look at this. Sorry it's not more hands-on. I think we should do another one where I should look at some techniques for EQing different content, but this is it for tonight. See you tomorrow.